It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Tony Hoops, who is the vice president for athletics at Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa. A an athletic director, I know vice president of athletics, that's a fancy title. Athletic director, if you will, and a coach on so many levels. And and so I'm just going to call you coach if that's all right. And I want to get started just by talking about Northwestern athletics in particular because crossover season went long recently. I mean, you, you've got teams playing on into the national championship game within days of one another. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it certainly was a, an interesting fall for us here at Northwestern College. You know, I took the job August 15th, or I took the job in July, but we moved August 15th. And so I'm not sure we got a chance to breathe from August 15th until about Christmas Day, it felt like anyway. It was definitely a crazy turn of events and, and a time that we loved it. Our families adjusted well. But, you know, here it is January 18th. I think it's the first time that I've kind of felt like I can actually do my job and not have to do a bunch of game day management stuff. But it's a good problem to have. And we're very blessed to have some outstanding coaches leading some outstanding programs that I was able to to walk into and be able to to just be able to support, abide by and, and listen to and grow within them. Um, outstanding people with some amazing student athletes. But it certainly was a great fall, um, you know, not only volleyball making the national championship and losing in five sets, but what a great run by them. First time they'd ever made it past the Elite Eight. Um, and so that was a huge opportunity for them. Football obviously had won the national championship the year before and was on this crazy long winning streak. And, you know, we unfortunately came up short in the national title game there to a really good Kaiser team too. But but even outside of that, men's soccer had a great run this year too and made the, the national tournament um, and, and had a great run, went into GPAC uh, conference title. So it certainly was fun. Uh, it, was, it was a great way for our family to connect with the community. Uh, it was great to see just the passionate fans that we have. I and mean, we probably had over a thousand fans again down in, in Durham watching the game there. Uh, the volleyball match had over 2,000 Raider fans there, um, just creating an unbelievable atmosphere. And so it has been crazy and uh, very fulfilling at the same time. And we have uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, God certainly has blessed us to be here. Um, and it was be kind of beyond. I felt like I was living a, bit of a, a little bit of a dream this fall. And so I'm uh, really appreciative of of just the work that President Christie has done here and others to set the platform for me to be able to come in and, and be able to do what I can to try and enhance Raider athletics because there's been great excellence before me and, and hopefully we'll continue to build upon that. Well, I, I don't know that you your timing to to step into the to the right place at the right time could have been any better. I, I don't think it could have been scripted any better at all. And and I look and and what you have done in your college time at the the very least being the basketball coach for the men's basketball team at your alma mater in Bethel in Kansas, and then moving into a position as a, as the director of athletics there as well before taking this position. What does it take then? A school like Bethel that that has really come a, around in the last decade, and I, I know part of that is is your work as well, but uh, has grown and the athletic department's doing well. Your alma mater, what does it take to uh, look at that and then go, okay, well, maybe I, I could step over here and do something else as well? I will say it was the hardest decision of my life, that's for sure. It, it, was, it was tough because my wife, it's not only my alma mater, it's also my wife's alma mater. She played volleyball there as well. Uh, it's it's a great place, and and some of my best friends are, are there. And uh, leaving there was was incredibly difficult. Uh, it's it's a, it's they're doing great things, they're continuing to do great things. And one of the things is we felt is when we left there was I never wanted to leave it to where it couldn't sustain excellence after we left. And it was it was great to follow them along. They had a good fall season, and they're continuing to do great things there too. And and now I get to be a fan of, of Thresher Athletics, which is a lot of fun there too. But. It was hard to leave, but at the same time, uh, I told President Christie here the there was only uh, it was going to take a unique opportunity for us to leave North uh, to leave Bethel, and Northwestern provided that. And I think what we were looking for was a place that um, obviously had this tradition of excellence, um, but was rooted in a Christian foundation um, because that was important to us at Bethel as well, um, being a part of small college athletics um, and working for. You know, uh, a great president and John Gehring at Bethel and, and, and to be able to work for a great president here at Northwestern as well and just the resources and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it was a case where we were looking for somewhere to go. Um, God just opened up a door for us to be able to to look at it. And we just felt like at that point in time, it was, it was something we couldn't turn down. Um, it got us out of our comfort zone and it was a challenge, to say the least, at the beginning. Uh, but it, it was good. And, and our kids were younger. I think that helps us to. 
Um, and so we felt like if we were going to stay at Bethel forever, that would have been fine. And if we went to Northwestern, that was okay too. Either way, it was a win-win for us. And we just felt like this was a chance that we wanted to do in the end. My wife was super supportive of it. And so we took a chance and moved to Northwest Iowa. Um, you know, five days ago, I'm not so sure it was the right move when it was negative 22 here. But but other than that, it's been great. So we, we really enjoyed it as it's snowing outside again today too. But people ask, well, why, why Iowa? Um, and I can only say that it's by uh, the grace of God that we, we came here because it certainly wasn't that we opened up the map and said, let's move to Northwest Iowa. It was more a matter of where's the best fit. And we've been able to find that here. And we really enjoyed it um, while still being able to keep our connections with it, Bethel. Um, but like I said, a great place. I think those are the most fun things. I think sometimes when you look back on them, it's the most fun thing that you weren't really looking for something. And then God shows up and here's an opportunity and it winds up being something that's incredible, like what you're describing right there. Although I will say uh, in the moment, sometimes it's you, you question a lot of things, I'm sure. So, As you were mentioning there, I, I have to ask you about something in particular. And I always like looking at the bios and seeing what people say, especially about a move. And, and you mentioned August 15th. Of course, that's less than uh, six months ago. It's only a, around five months from, from right now where we are today. Uh, temperature, I think, is a positive number there in, in Orange City as well, right? Single digit, but still a positive number. It just climbed the four as I'm looking at here. So right. we're making strides today. <laughs> well, you, you talked about uh, Northwestern and, and what you might like to do there and really to, to help it become and uh, to, to uh, work with people, to collaborate, and to help Northwestern Athletics to be the nation's model small college Christian athletic department. Talk about that a little bit and, and what that means. I think that means on a lot of forefronts, you know, our mission here is to honor Christ through excellence in athletics. And that's something we want to live out. Uh, I, don't, I do not want to be a hypocritical Christian department um, in, in an education. And that was something that stood out to me at President Christie models for us that, you know, it is in everything. We want to be intentionally Christian. And so that aspect of it, I can feel that within the coaches that I have. I'm blessed to have, I think, seven or eight coaches that have been here almost 15 years or longer. Like that's unheard of in small college athletics. And some of these people are just phenomenal leaders. Um, and, and, and even our younger coaches are, are phenomenal people that we could all grow together. And so it's been kind of fun to be challenged at work every single day to come here and, and learn from others as well. But that model Christian athletic department, you know, that some would say, well, how do you measure that? Um, and I think we would measure that on, on a variety of different forefronts. One is um, what are we recruiting to? Um, and, and that we, not, we don't have to sacrifice anything to, to be who we want to be. We want to be um, authentic in who we are. Uh, we want to make sure that we're um, having a faith driven component to all of our sport programs because that's what's built into the classroom as well. Um, that it's going to be a chapel service on a Tuesday and a Friday, and there's going to be an opportunity to grow in your faith in each one of our programs as well. Um, and so those things are really important for us. Um, and then that model, Christian, Act, I think that then goes into the word we use all the time, which is excellence. Um, and we just want to model excellence in whatever we do. Um, and that excellence might be on a football field, but that excellence also isn't independent of what we're doing in the classroom. And that excellence is not independent of what we're doing in our faith journey. That excellence isn't dependent upon uh, what we're doing in, on a day-to-day -day life. And so those standards that we have, it's been very eye-opening to me to see people say, well, why is Northwestern so athletic, you know, or so, so, so great in athletics? And, you know, we've got, we're blessed to have some really talented kids, but I don't think it's because we're overly talented. I think we're really, really disciplined and we got a bunch of really great coaches who draw the best out of them um, because we, we, our intentionality is in that excellence from a biblical standard. And when you do that, then all of a sudden uh, success breeds success in all aspects of life. And that's been something I'm really passionate about. And so to be able to do that and then say, hey, we've got really great things going on right here. But um, I would say that as I talk to our alums and whatever else, like we're just on the cusp being able to make something even better. Um, and a phrase that I like to use a lot of times where we're always becoming, we've never arrived. And I don't think Northwestern feels like they have arrived. And that was something that was really apparent to me in my interview was, you know, they want to talk about all the great years they had in the nineties and early two thousands. They want to talk about, Hey, we're proud of that, but we want to build out and become even better in the future. Um, and that's really stood out to me. Um, and that's why I believe that we can really become that model, uh, excellent Christian department. Um, you know, and there's, there's, um, rivalries within that. And that makes it a lot more fun as well to be able to build out that excellence across the board. 
We're here on the summit today on Midwest Sportsnet and visiting with the vice president of athletics at Northwestern, Tony Hoops, who has one of, I think, top five all-time names to work in athletics, especially as a, as a basketball coach. I, your basketball season's going on right now, and the excellence that you're talking about really didn't end with the fall season crossover win again long. And I, I'm your sports information department. I, I know the guys there. I mean, they were working very, very hard to keep us all up to speed on what was going on there. But I mean, basketball season now men's and women's teams with winning record and, and seem like the, that they're trying to put themselves in a position to be playing in Kansas city or just down the road in Sioux city. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, Obviously, passion is uh, I have a huge passion for basketball, and that's that's kind of my love. It's rooted in my name for sure. Right. But it's been something that's really been fun to be able to connect with our two coaches here. Coach Rotard on the women's side. She's done a great job. I and mean, she took over a program that was, you know, dominant in so many ways with multiple national championships. And, and she's done a really good job of making that her own. She's had to withstand some injuries this year, um, but they continue to be competitive. Um, and, and, you know, fighting to get into that national tournament, uh, still receiving votes in the national ranks. And, and they're only going to get better. They're super young and, and excited to see once what they continue to do that. And then Coach Corver, I mean, obviously a legend himself that's been here for so many years and national championship coach. And, you know, he's got some guys that have, have been injured um, in the past couple of years and, and getting the and Causeway kids back eligible or not eligible, back healthy. Um, you know, those things make a big difference for us. And that, that team there. You know, they had a tough loss. Both had a tough loss last night at Morningside, two really good programs. Um, but, you know, they're really, I think, poised to do some great things here in the postseason. And, and that's just kind of fun. It's like, you know, it's like, hey, we finished football on whatever, December 18th, and here we are halfway through basketball season. And uh, it's it's a joy now to be able to go watch some great games in the Boltman Center and watch two great coaches lead great programs. Um, and this is a basketball community. Um, and, uh, and it's a big sports community overall, but in, in the winter, people are being inside and basketball is their thing. And so it's kind of, it's fun to watch that. With, with all that you have going on, I, I want to ask this and I, you don't have to go into complete vlog mode or anything like that, but I would ask you what, what's a day like for you? I mean, you've talked about some of the things that, that go into it and, and pushing toward excellence and wanting to have excellence in, in what you do, uh, a day for you might consist of what? Uh, it's going to vary from day to day, that's for sure. But I, I would say I think I'm still trying to figure that out because the fall was so crazy that I'm not sure what every day looked like. I'd come home and my wife would be like, well, how's your day? And I'm like, I don't know. I was in meetings all day long and just trying to figure out what I need to do. But it certainly has been uh, a joy to do that. And, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But, you know, a typical day, you know, this time of the year, it's it's a lot of um, a budget season and we're trying to balance and figure out where we're at budget wise. Um, it's a lot of meetings with coaches. I'm blessed to have some great staff here um, and, you know, individuals who do great things, but they're only as great as how much, you know, I can lead them. And, you know, for me, leadership is about empowerment. Um, I, I don't have the time nor the ability to do everybody's job, but I can help them be great in their job. And so for me, connecting with them one on one is vitally important. Um, and there'll be days, to be honest with you, where it's like I got another individual meeting I got to go communicate with. But those are the most important meetings because that email can wait, but that relationship can't. Um, and so really want to pour into the people um, and live out what the standards of excellence that we have here. And to me is if I can support the great people that we have here, um, there's a reason people stay here. Uh, it's because they feel valued. They feel appreciated. Um, and I want to continue to do that for them. So, you know, meetings, a lot of times meeting with people, serving on our presidential cabinet, working with that. Um, doing a lot of fundraising as well, continue to grow our Raider Athletic Association board and meeting with our great donors in the community. You know, we're only a town of about 6,500 people, and we have unbelievable um, just support from our community, whether that be corporate or individuals. Um, you know, and people don't realize we're only 10 minutes down the road from Dort University as well. And so, you know, it creates that, I think, opportunities for, for uh, the drive of excellence and, um, you know, we just have some really supportive community here. And so being able to do that day to day is that's my favorite part of the job. But typically then I'll put my kids to bed and then stay up way too late trying to answer emails and get all the work done that I didn't get done throughout the rest of the day uh, because I've got all these other details. But uh, that's OK. I'm all right with that because I'd rather uh, put the emphasis on relationships first, because to me, this is a relationship business, because um, in the end, like we're doing this for student athletes. Like this isn't about Tony Hoops. It's not about our coaches. It's not about our records. 
Like how great of an experience at Bethel, we always talk about, we want to create life-changing experiences for our student athletes. And I want to do the same thing here is we want to be able to create the best experiences possible for our student athletes. And for me, that means I need to be able to intentionally connect with them. Um, and and that, that takes some work, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because I think it keeps me young as well. Well, listen, you, I, I appreciate that. And, and we do want to continue to do things that, that keep us young. And uh, I, I, but I think, I think, again, goes back to what you said earlier. I think God opens up the right doors so that, that we, when, when we go through at the right time and, and not jump the gun and, and I, I, I've learned my lessons from being younger and, and maybe knowing what I think God wanted me to do and, and get there too early. But when we go through at the right time, I, I think we, we thrive in that. And, and I think it keeps us with a, a youthful strength and, and exuberance in that. All right. Well, I, I, let me wrap up like this. And I would love to get to visit with you longer. And I hope that you come back on and uh, we can talk some more. And obviously, if, if Northwestern continues to <laughs> do what it's been doing, uh, definitely we want, to, we want to promote there. And that's, I think, part of my question. You mentioned August 15th. So here we are, January 18th, five months, three days. We're not even a full half year in here, Coach, and the bar has already been set for high for your tenure on down the road. Is it set too high already? Where do you go from here? I think that's the that's the great thing about Northwestern, right, is, is that obviously we, we do this because we, we want to win the competitors and all of this, but, but in the end, like, it's not about how many wins does Matt McCarty have. It's, it's we really want to focus on what kind of, how many lives can we impact, and we get to do that through the, the great game of sport. Um, and so, uh, I, ironically, uh, I was just speaking in a class right before I did this interview and they asked the question, you know, like, well, you know, what is it that really drives you or motivates you? I don't remember what the exact question was, but I, I would say is if the only goal is that we want to win championships, eventually that'll never be enough. And it'll be the shallow feeling. Um, and so for me, I want to be able to be able to be great in how we do things, but I remember driving away from the stadium when we lost in the national championship football game and for a few moments feeling sorry for myself as though I just played in two national championship games. And I'm like, sorry for myself. Like, woe is me? Like, why should I ever be sorry about that? Right. But I remember at that moment really reflecting on my wife's always the one that puts things in perspective for me, but you know, if that's really what it's all about, well then it'll never be enough. Um, and so for us, it's, it's the daily standard. Um, and so as we look to the future here, I want to continue to enhance that daily standard. And that's, that's growing our coaches through professional development and doing some things in the summer, um, that's continuing to connect with our alumni. That's continuing to provide resources, um, you know, whether that be through, through uh, funding or scholarshiping or whether that might be. Um, those are the things that really drive us towards it. So, you know, can we always expect to be in a national championship game? Well, of course, I'd love to be right. And, you know, but at the end of the day is if that's our only goal, you'll sacrifice whatever it takes to get there. And, and I don't want us to ever be in. I don't want our coaches to ever feel that they have to be in that situation. I want them to be able to enjoy it. Um, because this is a hard job, um, not necessarily being an AD, but being a coach, it's a hard job and it wears on you after a while. So for me, I want to be able to lead them so that they can be transparent, they can be authentic and they can lead the way they want to lead. And then um, God will lead us where we're going to go with it and, and hopefully continue to bless us in regards to how we have success on the field. But in the end, um, if, if we want to focus on something much broader than that, and that's just a byproduct of doing the little things right. And I, I'm a big believer when you when you do the academics right, when you're growing people spiritually and in their faith and, and as people, um, the winds will take care of itself. I appreciate that. And, and, uh, like I said, I could, I could visit with you all day and hear that there. I, I enjoy the wisdom and I'm thankful that you get to share it with me today. And of course, with everyone that's watching and thank you for taking time with us here then. And I'll, I'll just say it. I appreciate it. Tony hoops, the vice president of athletics for Northwestern in Orange City, Iowa, the Red Raiders just continue to roll. It's It's been a great start, and I know with you at the helm, it's going to continue to do well, and I appreciate your perspective and, and the way that you're leading. And thanks again for taking time with us today and being with us here on the Summit. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks for all you do for small college athletics as well. Uh, it's a joy to be on here.